Hi, I'm Juliet Newell. In this show, we explore the minds of architects as we take you on a fascinating journey into the methodology behind design. This is Property Ladder. This is a brand new 15 minute show focusing on the design, money and effort that goes into creating architectural marvels that dot the city skyline or the leafy suburbs. We delve into the psyche of the architect, along with their thought process in the creation of the ultimate design. We chat to the homeowner to find out if their expectations were met and what their involvement in the vision of the architect was. The true star of the show, however, is the architect himself, who takes us on a grand scale tour of a completed property with personal insights into his motivation behind structural decisions and design choices. We also chat to a building industry insider about the pitfalls, profits and perils of construction. This isn't your average home decor style show, but rather an intricate look into the psyche of the builder, the designer, the architect. How do you go about selecting the architect for this project? Um, to be honest, I, I don't think I did. Um, the builder and me um, is actually a good friends and he suggested an architect that he said to me he's worked with and that he recommends that does good work and um, introduced us and yes. And, and are you still there, friends with him? Yes, there we still, go. we're still friends and yeah, it worked out well. So you had a budget in mind, did you go over that budget much? Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yes, I think, uh, yeah, yeah um, I, uh, we did go over the budget, but yeah. I think that's almost normal, especially in the time that um, that we did uh, build. I think there was a lot of increases in certain raw materials, but it wasn't um, anything severe. I think uh, we did. I think we did quite well. What part of your home is your most favourite part? I think the the area we, we're in now, um, we're sitting in now, is most probably my favourite. From an investment point of view, did you think about resale value? I think building your your, your primary residence um, or your, uh, the house you're going to be living in, um, that plays a role but I think yeah. it, was more it was more a factor of um, getting a house to bring up kids and enjoy with your family and stuff like that. A lot of people say to build a house is a very brave move. Mm -hmm. If you could give just one piece of advice for somebody who's looking at possibly building a house from scratch, what would that be? You need to, to prepare yourself to say, it's not going to be um, smooth sailing. I think it's going to be. You, you're going to have certain challenges, and it's it's unfortunate, like most things in life, it's uh, it's what you make of it. And uh, and you, I think prepare yourself mentally prior to start building to say yeah. this. Near there, there will be certain challenges, but think of the the end result. And like if I think back now, um, yes, we've had challenges, but uh, at the end result, uh, it was worthwhile. When you started putting together ideas for the decor. And I'm using the word decor quite broadly because if you think about decor, you think more of soft furnishings, <coughs> curtains and scatter cushions and, and things like that. But this is more designed, it's more um, bespoke. Mm -hmm. When you started that process, was it with the architectural styling in mind? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, um, you can never, my, my personal taste um, was always vintage okay. and rustic. Yeah. And when we moved into the house, I said to my husband, I cannot put in yeah. my, you know, um, 1800 sleeper couch in here. Yeah. It's not going to, it's yeah. not going to match yeah. anything. Yes, I must say I had to change a lot of my style and a lot of my um, you like personal preference. You're flexible like that though. And you know what, yeah. I actually love the house the way it is. Yeah. Um, I've never even looked back on, yeah. on, on anything that I, that I would have used. Yeah. So, yeah, I think your eye kind of changes, yeah. you know, and it adapts to what the space allows you to do. Yeah, well, the owner's clearly impressed, but there's a great mind behind this design, and that mind belongs to architect Leon van der Vestazen. Isn't the relationship between the architect and the owner-to-be quite a sensitive relationship, and how do you know that it's actually going to work? You spend a lot of time mm. with, with a client, uh, you need to understand his, his needs and, and, and understand his lifestyle and, and what he wants to achieve. So you, you need to understand and, and become involved with a client either way. Would you say that this 
is a fair representation of South African styled architecture. So it's a very touchy subject, um, <laughs> so I'm going to skirt around it because you know the academics, you know, do get a get a bit uptight about it. But yeah, I think it's 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 one of the issues in South Africa. We're struggling to achieve a, sort of an architectural, you know, South African architectural style. But I think this house speaks of, you know, um, a, a response to the climate and that's the yes. way that I, li I like to, to sort of design houses. Does the estate have any restrictions in terms of the architectural styling and the finishes? Uh, obviously on the outside yes. it doesn't really matter what you would have it's, it's actually It's actually quite stringent. Um, really? So there's a, there's a whole manual you need to work with. So it's quite modular, lots of blocks on blocks. Fortunately, that's the way the clients sort of interpret it. But yes, you know, behind yes. the scenes, there's obviously a lot of work to oh, you know to make it work. It's not Lego. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got over here at the entrance an indigenous garden. Is that part of the the regulations, if you like, for Serengeti to have it indigenous? Is. Yes, no. definitely. So yeah. they um, they promote that, and actually, it's part of the approval process. Goodness me! Well, the first thing that strikes me is this raw concrete on, on the ceiling. Why did you keep it raw like that? Um, you'll notice that it's a feature sort of coming in from the exterior, then all, all the way through the, through the home. Um, and that was a, one of the essential palettes. I want to see the living space and wow, isn't that spectacular? You know what's really great about this is that with these doors open, you can't see where the house starts and when it ends. And then you've got the added benefit of the golf course, which is it's borrowed landscape, essentially. Yes, yeah. yes. You, you almost get that, exactly. I mean, you get that feeling of, wow, you know, I'm almost on the on the fairway. And in the kitchen, you've gone for a very simple palette. You've got the cream and you've got the greys. You've got the two-toned greys. Or is this the same? It's just the lighter. This is so clever, the way that you've done this. As you say, the spaces are, are defined by the furniture layout. So you've exactly. got an extra dining space here. You've got a lovely casual seating area there, the sun lounges, mm. the bar and even another little table there, a poker table. Let's call it a poker table. Cool. <laughs> you know, everyone always said, don't have your bo you know, your bedroom face west. But I mean, when you're up there, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's so you have to bit. counter these things. For sure, um, and there's always a way. There's, yeah, if, if there's always a way. Well, this is fantastic. I see you've got the wood detail again, but this is a different wood. What is this? Is this oak? It's it's a white oak okay. that we um, treated with a stain to give yes. the you know to give the effect of the flames coming up. Oh, so that brings out the grain. Mm. From an investment point of view, when you're building a home from scratch and you've got your clients' input and obviously a whole bunch of your input, when you have to give in to the client and do something that perhaps you're not particularly happy with. How would that affect the resale of the property? Not to sound cocky, but I think any good architecture, uh, any good architect needs to guide his clients. Yes, yes. Uh, and obviously um, put his foot down and say, listen, it's something that's not going to work and you need yeah. to think about, I mean, it's a big investment. Yeah. Um, and nine out of ten times, um, if, if you have a, you know, a, 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 a good um, sort of counter argument. Yeah. You could you could convince the client not to do it. If you were to advise a new client that had the option of building a new house or renovating an existing home, from an investment point of view, in terms of the money you would be spending to get that home up to scratch, which option would you go for? You know, if you get the the, the, the renovation option for a real bargain, I'd say yes. you know it's something worth it that you can go for. Um, but I've seen many instances where it actually ends up way more expensive yeah. in renovating yeah. um, than it is, you know, building from scratch. Yeah. Oh wow, look at this. Oh my word, and then you've got the mirrors there as well. Yeah, it's actually built in cupboards, you know, with the mirrors. So, so clever. So you can lie in the bar and look at the view. And enjoy the view. And you can lie on the bed and look at the view. Yes. And we've also got an interesting feature here. So we've, we've got the, the shower here. Uh, and then a sneaky little <laughs> trick. Um, so out of the shower, you, you've, you've got another outdoor shower. Aha! Uh -huh. You see, now um, that's what I'm talking about. They're all that open. So you can just imagine Saturday morning view. after gym. It reminds in there, me and of one of those bird hides. <laughs> it's a bedroom. Um, oh, it's great. I love the furniture and the decor. The soft finishes are so natural. Mm. And they work so well with the environment. This is obviously you know, decorated in the in the, in the yes, client, it's so, a kitty, isn't that cute? Yeah. And then, you know, bedroom two. Yes. Um, 
you know, again with with its own ensuite. It's, it's nice to see that the the, 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 the the raw concrete ceilings actually work. It still works. Yeah. It still works. It's one thing having your dream on paper. It's quite another realizing that dream, and that job belongs to Chris Van Sale. He was the man responsible for the construction of this masterpiece. So how important is your relationship with the architect? Well, it's very important, especially with us in Bilpro, to have a great relationship with the architect and also the client. So there's sometimes you have to improvise in the moment. You have to get to the details and say, listen, it's not going to work, or let's look at something else. This will be more practical, but we'll still get the look so for us, we don't just want to get the easy way out because we really have a passion for designing in the construction industry. But we will advise on what's more practical and also the architects, architect plays a big role in that. What do you do to ensure the best possible outcome for the home without going over budget but at the same time ensuring quality? If you've got a great professional team from the start, you can finalize the, the small things that is difficult to cost, for instance, the detailing. And many times we also do a lot of bespoke um, construction. Yes. So there's stuff that ne has never been done before. Sure. So we also need to educate the clients and listen, this could go a little bit extra. And we always give them a choice up front, once again, managing expectations. Yes. In our luxury home market that we deal in, our clients normally are immune to, to the ups and downs. So we really try to be a specialist and that's why I've always tried to position myself as a specialist in the industry and only to do the best work. We, we like the environment. We're only currently building in, um, in country estates and golf estates and also looking forward into developing. But when developing, we'll basically do our own estates. So yes, of yes, course you can keep the look and feel of it and then on your resale, that's very important. Now with property, there's also a very serious business side to it. Often, people ignore this in favour of wildly investing in property that may have no resale value at all. We chatted to High Street Auctions about property as an investment. Property is always a good investment. Um, it's, uh, one would think that it is completely recession proof. Um, being a, a property investor myself, it, it is definitely something which stands the test of time. Brick and mortar, best investment in the world. Before we started High Street seven years ago, I, I would never have bought or sold a property on auction. I absolutely categorically. Um, and, and now I wouldn't sell one of my properties unless it, or buy a property unless it was on auction. The beauty of auction is that it is completely transparent and it's a done deal you know there are no ifs buts or maybes there are no conditions when Joff knocks a property down the property is sold um, there there's no subject to finance and going off to the bank and trying to find the money and having 45 days to do it it's a guaranteed outcome yeah, it really is you, you have a guaranteed outcome within four to six weeks and from a from a fund and a corporate point of view the transparency of an auction from corporate governance doesn't get any better Lot number five. Lot number five is part of a corporate disposal. It is a pristine office block. A pristine office block, ladies and gentlemen. It is part of lot number five. Two, two, give it away. Have it a two, have it a two. Uh, what about you, sir? Three, you're in. Thank you, sir. 21, one, one, give it away, sir. At 21 million for the entire property, sir. 21 million. Plus call. Wax now with 21 million. Give it away. Have it a two, 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 sir. Gone. That four million rand on the nose. Lot number six is done. Probably 90% or more. 95% of all work is private instruction, corporates, uh, property funds, um, rich clients. Uh, they, they, they really enjoy and, and it works using our auction platform from racetracks to Clifton houses to huge tracts of land. Uh, it's industrial facilities. Our auction platform really, really works. It's the best job in the world. He works one day a month. I mean, good heavens. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I'll see you in about a month's time. Uh, it's it's difficult. It's, there's there are no real auction schools you can study for in South Africa. They are in the in the states and in and around Europe. I was lucky enough to to spend some time overseas, uh, where we did a bit of studying. But it's it's uh, you know it's it's pretty much like Lawrence. You you learn through your trade. You know we have a team of of sales execs that that are continuously searching for property. Um, we also have a. A, a private network of, of clients that we're very fortunate to give us property to sell on a regular basis, and and we we and the online portal that brings property in. There's absolutely no doubt. Our website is very very well received by by the public in general. We're fortunate in that the majority of our work does come through through private connections and, and so on. 
uh, rather than the divorce, distress and, and death scenario, which is great business, but, but we get very little of that at the moment. So they're all vetted, we, they have to, we have to know that they're in a position that they can actually purchase a property. And also they have to register with us, they have to FICA with us and they have to pay a registration deposit. It protects both buyers and sellers with the new Consumer Protection Act. We know who the buyers are, we know who the sellers are and you know, both sides are protected and we facilitate in the middle. We um, charge a buyer's premium. So on all the properties that we sold today, there would have been a 10% buyer's premium that is, that is paid over and above what Joff sells the property for. So that figure that Joff sells for is net to the seller. From a, from a selling point of view, uh, it's fantastic because every property has a, has a due diligence done on it. Uh, it's rigorously uh, stock picked, if we can call it that. It, we have to get a, a minimum of, of three directors to sign it off. And if it doesn't make the grade, we don't auction it, but we explain why it's not auction stock. So the auctionability of the asset is extremely important. Uh, but from a buyer's point of view, it's 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 fantastic because you get quality assets. We're really looking for a person who is potentially divesting out of one portfolio and moving into another. Those are, those are good, good assets to sell. Um, we, look, we look at where the yields are in terms of, of a seller wanting to get out of a property. If his yield is, is miles away from the market but he's a real seller, we probably wouldn't take it on either. Every property we auction gets an undisclosed reserve, which is only known to the auctioneers and the seller. And if we feel it's unrealistic, we won't move forward, but we'll explain why we won't move forward. If it is realistic and it ticks all our boxes, then it gets up on our platform. If the sellers are in the room, and we really try and encourage all our sellers to be in the room, and they actually see what happens on an auction, that's the market. You know, you can, you can wait for a higher price and it will take you a few months to get it, but more often than not, if you create the market in an auction arena like this, there's your market. You know, those are your buyers on the day they create the market. You, you physically have, the, as Lance says, you physically have the market right in front of you. So watching a buyer and watching a seller and the two of them watching each other, you actually realize that this is what the market is prepared to pay. Thank you.